Hi Pop-Tarts, thank you so much for joining me for this video where I'm going to share with you a few ideas that you can use if you are feeling blue, if you are down in the dumps, if you're feeling a bit shitty, if you're feeling a bit melancholy, if it's not necessarily been a very good day or week or month, I'm hoping that this list will serve to inspire because sometimes when you're down and you know that you want to pull yourself out of it and you're willing to pull yourself out of it, you find yourself a bit short on ideas, at least that's been my experience. So I want this video to kind of compile together a few of the tried and tested methods that I have found for pulling myself out of a slump, motivating myself again when the motivation has like gone west. <laughs> it's gone somewhere darling, it's gone to Benidorm on holiday and uh, really just kind of shaking myself out of a depressive mood. Um, if you've been hanging out around here at my channel for any length of time then you'll probably know that I do suffer from depression. I do like to be as realistic as I possibly can be about the depression and the effect it has on me and I made a whole big video about it by the way if anybody wants to check that out I will leave it down below in the down bar for you but I, I like to be realistic about a depression and the fact that doing one or two things to pull myself out of a out of a low point isn't necessarily going to clear the episode entirely. If I'm going through it and the black wave is coming over me, then it's likely to stick around for a few days or sometimes a few weeks. But at the same time, I do accept my responsibility to help myself to reframe my perspective, to know when I'm doing things that are not necessarily helping me to get out of the funk, and to just take small actions to put me in the mind of actually being proactive about what it is that I'm going through. To me, that's far more important than trying to find some complete outright cure, which I do not believe I'm ever going to be granted in this lifetime necessarily. It's not something I'm searching for desperately. It's not something that I'm convincing myself necessarily exists. I'm not saying that I don't want to be cured of depression necessarily, so definitely don't get my words mixed up there. I'm just saying that for me, it makes much more sense to have kind of a ready toolkit of different things that I can go to that will just help me to shift into a different energy, um, adopt a different mindset, keep going with the day when maybe I feel like I can't keep going with the day. So that's kind of more what these uh, tips and ideas are for. Okay, so number one, right at the the top sleep on it take a nap have a nap sleep for a little while it is true that sleeping on it does offer you a fresh perspective on it if you're short on solutions if you're just um, finding that you've got the same cyclical thought going round and round in your brain box and it's really turning your gray bread head into mush then maybe try a nap move around get your endorphins pumping that would be number two and you don't necessarily have to leave your room or your home your domestic situation in order to do that to the extent extent that you can move around, move around, even if you're in a situation where you're experiencing chronic pain or your disability prevents you from going for a wander, leaving the home, um, just try rotating your shoulders, you know, just really kind of rotating your head, anything that you can do to get yourself moving and checking in with your body in that way and just kind of getting the blood pumping around. The blood's pumping around anyway, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Reach out. I know it's a fairly obvious one, but I feel like it could stand to be said that if you do feel like you're in a situation where you just need to communicate your feelings to somebody you can always email somebody whatsapp somebody leave a voice message for somebody if you feel like you need to speak to somebody and you need that interaction there's so many different things that you can do to get that you can call a depression hotline a suicide prevention hotline in the uk we have the samaritans and quite a few of my friends and loved ones have used the samaritans before and i've asked them about their experiences and they've reported amazing experiences there are ways that you can reach out where you will actually have somebody to, to communicate kind of back to you. Sometimes even if you do have a loved one that you feel you can open up to about the way that you feel, you don't want to necessarily. You might not want the responsibility of having to check in repeatedly with that loved one afterwards or you might not want to worry them. You might feel as though you can't actually be open and honest about what you're going through and at times like that I think that helplines and online services are really useful. You know some of them are free, some of them you pay for but in any event I think it's a quick way sometimes for somebody to just have that back and forth with somebody and have that response from somebody. There are support groups online as well, you know, there are supportive Facebook groups and things like that. There are communities that people are in where they feel like they can reach out. Really just think about what is available to you, what would make sense to you if you need to reach out, where would you go? If you've got some funds available to you and you feel like this is the right way to go, you could definitely consider purchasing a reading. There are so many amazing people that do tarot readings, angel card readings, oracle readings, that kind of thing and a lot of them are geared 
geared towards self-development. They are geared towards, you know, really just kind of connecting with your strength, finding your center, strategizing, thinking about what the next good positive action would be. There are so many people that are really giving nurturing readings and you can see from the kind of content that they create what kind of readings they're actually giving. So you have a sense before you go into a transaction with a reader of what kind of readings they actually would provide and what kind of perspective they have. Try chanting. Chanting is an incredible way to lift the vibration, to change the energy, to put you in a completely different mood. It's just incredible. I love chanting and I'm really only at the very beginning of my journey with chanting. I've only been doing it for three years and I feel like that's still like a little baby chanter to be honest with you. I don't know that many different chants um, but the ones that I know and the tried and tested ones that I really appreciate I go with and I've also tried just kind of um, just seeing what sounds come out and just going with that just seeing what kind of noise my throat and my mouth wants to actually make and then just sitting with that and repeating it. I have some chimes that I use like some little Tibetan chimes that I use that I do between every chant so every repetition I'll, I'll kind of ting the chimes in between and that really gives me something and lends itself to the overall feeling of cleansing and clarity that comes from chanting so I would recommend if you're looking for something new in a spiritual practice and you've never tried chanting before give it a go obviously a lot of people just like to chant the word om and you could go so deep with what the meaning of that word is, what the meaning of that sound is. Do some research on it, it's absolutely amazing. Some people really like to chant Om Mane Padme Hum. These are two that are really popular, but there are absolutely tons. And like I said, you can totally make your own if none of these chants really resonate with you. The only reason I mention these two is because a lot of people that begin their practice with chanting really like to start with, um, you know, Sanskrit chants that are very widely used. Um, and that are kind of tried and tested, if you will. Take something off your plate. If you know that there are too many things on your to-do list, there are too many things that you're trying to get done over the space of a day or a week, sit down and decide that you're gonna strike something off of the to-do list that week. Let yourself have less on your plate. I think that quite often we stress ourselves out and we put too many things on our to-do list and that really contributes to the sense of stress, anxiety, depression, low moods, that kind of thing. So definitely think about what you can stand to place onto maybe a non-time specific to-do list for the future. Put yourself in a position where you can think, okay, I definitely do want to declutter my space or I do want to do this thing with this person or, you know, whatever. Um, that is a plan, but I'm going to take it off of the time sensitive to-do list. I'm just going to put it somewhere at the back where I can think to myself, yes, that will get done, but it's not going to get done within this time frame. And you might find that after that, you can really like drop your shoulders and relax a little bit because you've got one less thing that you've got to worry about doing within that set time time frame. Oh, this is just a little um, peppermint tea intermission, just to say that, you know, if you want a little bonus suggestion, drink some peppermint tea. It's so rejuvenating. Mm. Non-spawn, non-spawn. Mm. You might find that one thing it helps you to do is actually to sit down and do a little bit of planning. If you're not somebody that actually tends to plan out what you're going to do with your time, um, what you want to actually accomplish by the end of the day, you might want to do that. It might be something that actually really helps you. I think everybody's very different when it comes to planning. Obviously, I'm one to plan out my time and think of a strategy for how I'm going to fill my day in a productive way. For other people, maybe they take that to a shadowy place. It's not right for everybody, but maybe if you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling demotivated you might want to give yourself just um, two or three key things that you would like to get done that day and even if you tick off one it's better than sitting there kind of stewing in your own confusion and your own sense of overwhelm and ending up doing none of them right so one is better than none that's that's the theory we're going with for this particular tip <laughs> have a shower or a bath or just kind of splash your face with cold water this can really be very awesome it changes obviously the body temperature it gives you that sensation of being immersed in water which can really kind of shift your energy and get you thinking in a different way. Also, if you look at it spiritually, it can be seen as a really um, profound form of cleansing. It's really easy to kind of cleanse your energy when you're actually under flowing water or immersed in water because you've got that psycho-spiritual association there and it is kind of just so 
um, it's so visceral, you know, that it makes the process of cleansing your thoughts and cleansing your spirit much easier to do. Um, it's very relaxing to be immersed in water. You kind of feel like you're washing off the stresses and strains of the day or what's going on in your head. So definitely think about doing that to switch up the temperature gauge and switch up the energy. And you may find that it helps you to think a little bit differently and just get kind of back into the right lane again. This is kind of a more in-depth suggestion leading on from point number two so with point number two i suggested moving the body around so with this point i'm talking more about actually doing a workout doing a set workout of some kind whether you want to do that at the gym if you have a membership whether you want to do that at home on a mat you can find so many amazing awesome workout videos online i really like blogger lattes and that amazing woman called adrian who does yoga videos both of them are really good if you just want to find a routine that's easy um, to follow and it's got a friendly instructor and you just feel like you can get into it and you don't need to think it over too much I'll leave the links to both of those channels below they're channels that I personally favor if I feel like I just need easy access to a good workout that's going to help me to move my body around and just get back into the zone um, you might have other channels that you favor but those are two that I think are really good so yeah do a workout at the gym at home whatever the case may be um, if you have never tried doing like following along with a video workout honestly do it there's absolutely just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of free workouts on youtube and you're thinking about you know mat workouts you've got your um, cardio workouts you've got all kinds of videos that don't require any equipment they don't require a resistance band they don't require any weights so they're really good to just do where you the only kind of the weight you're using is the weight of your own body kind of thing you've got loads of free yoga videos loads of free Pilates videos I mean it's really is quite amazing the the range of free resources that you have and you don't need anything you know just kind of get into a t-shirt and shorts or your underwear get on the carpet and just start doing it Think about how much light you've got in the room and how much fresh air you've got in the room. Whatever room you're in, if it's if it's kind of dull and like dim and you're not getting enough sunlight or that the room isn't lit well enough, you might want to think about just putting a few more light sources in there, maybe get some candles going if that kind of thing cheers you up and makes you feel better. I know it does for me. I love lighting candles. I instantly, just the act of lighting a candle actually makes me feel better and kind of brings me back to myself slightly. But definitely if you've got the curtains drawn and the sun is up outside and it's daylight, you might want to think about giving yourself a little bit more vitamin D by opening up those curtains, opening up that blind and think about fresh air. How long has it been since you had fresh air? If you really feel like you can't go outside then just crack the window a little bit really be conscious of, of how much fresh air you're getting into your lungs if you're in a kind of like um, a room where the air is musty there hasn't really been much fresh air kind of ventilating the room you might want to take that very very small step and honestly it does feel quite rejuvenating make yourself a smoothie if you've got a blender then you could make yourself a smoothie you could look one up online there's so many so many so many different recipes for making yourself a smoothie it's not the kind of thing that people want to do all the time you know people can't afford to buy excessive amounts of fruit I like to do it once in a while as a treat I used to do it a lot more regularly but I felt like first of all I had to have all of this fruit available to me all the time to have these smoothies and I didn't always feel like a smoothie but I had all the shit in the fruit bowl so I felt like I had to and I felt like well it's kind of you know it's it's definitely part of the shopping list that could stand to go down a little bit and on top of that, you know, I definitely sometimes feel like the cleanup after a smoothie, like washing the blender, putting all the stuff away. In the morning, first thing, that's not really what I want to be doing with my life. But I do like the occasional smoothie and I do like to look up a new recipe and then just go and get the stuff for like that specific recipe. Follow the ingredients and just enjoy it. So if you've got access to a blender, you might want to give that a little whirl. Look up some inspiring quotes. There are just untold amounts of inspiring words floating around that have really helped other people to get out of a slump and a lot of them have become classics some of them are lesser known try and find some inspiring quotes that really plug you in i like to just um you know google quotes on a specific topic and then i have a look at the image search and i might have a look on weheartit.com or on pinterest or whatever um, have a look at brainyquote.com and stuff like that and just see you know what kinds of quotes come up based on the different themes that you choose 
use if for example you are oh goodreads goodreads is a really good one for quotes as well there's all kinds of different places online you can find quotes so for example if you are looking at um you know building courage if you're scared of doing something and it's really putting you in a low mood look up quotes on courage and see if any of them kind of jump out at you and give you that advice that you've been waiting on that you've been needing make a playlist playlists are awesome you can actually make playlists on youtube you can make playlists on spotify and pandora and all that good shizzle if you have an account there you can make an old you can make a playlist like literally on a cassette tape you can make a cd you know mix cd whatever however you want to do it whatever's going to be working for you um, you can make a mixtape that's based on a specific theme so you can give yourself a kind of project to make a mixtape that taps into a certain emotion or describes a specific time in your life or a specific relationship that you have in your life you can do anything like that I love 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 making playlists it's something that I'm taking a lot more seriously now like it's like when I was a teenager I took it very seriously and it was very serious business making playlists you know everything had to be correct and curated perfectly and I would make the tape and I'd make the innards of the tape and it would fold out and it'd have all this art on it and me and my best friend would do it back and forth and we would swap tapes this way and then when I got a bit older I'd do that with CDs as well in fact one of the very first gifts I bought for my ex-partner uh, designed made for my ex-partner was three mix cds and they actually had like proper cases and everything and they had fold out artwork in them that i created and that was really cool to do and then I kind of lost my way with playlists for a while and I was like, oh, you know, whatever. And now I'm really back to it. I'm really like into playlists again. And I see them as little works of art. They're little creative projects that really make you think more about yourself and where you are in your life and why you are making the choices that you've made for a specific playlist. So that's a really cool thing to do. We're up to 14 now. And number 14 is be of service, help somebody else, do something to make a difference uh, for somebody, whether it's donate whether it's just you know knocking on the door of your socially isolated neighbor and asking if they need anything from the shop whether it's just sending a friendly email to someone that you know could really do with it and could do with a lift um, give somebody a compliment you know offer to just help make somebody's life easier in some way if you feel like you have the ability to do that and the inclination to do that and if you feel like it would make your life brighter then it's been a beautiful exchange and sometimes when you don't know what to do when you don't know how to help yourself helping somebody else can be a very alchemical act if you're like me you might have a tendency to be very overwhelmed by communication with friends and family communication that happens for, for you know through text messaging for example and whatsapp and things like that you might find that it does tend to get on top of you quite a lot one thing that i would definitely recommend is that you schedule time to um fulfill your communication obligations if you will so if you know that there are several friends that you do want to get back to but you feel like you're not necessarily in the right frame of mind to get back to people in the moment then it might be a good idea for you to just schedule one or two times a week where you do get back to everybody unless of course it's urgent but if people are just checking in with you and giving you news don't feel like you have to respond to them immediately don't feel like you have to give your news back immediately if you're not in the right headspace you're not in the right headspace and it might be a good idea for you to actually schedule time to um to kind of carry out your communications i like to sometimes leave messages and do several in one go and i tend to feel that that makes me feel like i've got a lot more control over the time that i spend in communication with people when i'm re replying to people um, instantly in real time as they're replying to me sometimes i feel like i've just got four different conversations going on at once the phone keeps drawing me back to it because i keep getting you know further notifications or i feel like i need to respond again in real time because that's what's going on kind of thing and i tend to find that nowadays i'm much better at just being like okay you know what at 4 30 i'll reply to all of it or i'm going to leave it for today i've got too much to do but tomorrow i'm really going to give it my attention so i feel like it's it's really about collate collecting your communication tasks into one area so you don't feel like they're sucking the energy and the life force out of you during the day it's not to say that i don't like communicating with my loved ones i love it but sometimes i feel like i've lost a lot of time to it during the day if I'm engaged in multiple different conversations so try to round up your communications if it is the kind of thing that stresses you out and let yourself do it in one fell swoop at a specific time if you've got any leftovers in your food cupboards then it might be a good time to figure out what you can
can make with them and try something new. There's a site here called BigOven.com and I think this is one of many sites that do a similar thing where you can choose up to three ingredients that you have left over and it will explain to you something that you can make using those ingredients. There's also loads of articles and blog posts and stuff online about how to be creative with leftovers and how to make sure that you reduce waste and have a good time actually exploring different recipes based on what you've got left over. I like to go through my food cupboards intermittently and just see if there's any sauces that I might have been using for one specific thing that I then just put away and didn't use again and just have a look at what you make with those sauces like what kinds of recipes do those sauces turn up in and thinking about whether or not I can make that and how many other things I've got for that so it's kind of like a sort of jigsaw made out of different bits of food and you like put it together and go oh there is a meal here with all of this random stuff and I don't have to go food shopping like this is this uh, this will do kind of thing and just thinking about being creative about it learn some words in another language just randomly learn some words in any language could be a language you're learning or you're interested in could be the language of your ancestors just um yeah pick 10 words or so and then learn them revise them like turn the piece of paper over say them again perfect the pronunciation it's always good to have a few words in another language under your belt always 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 if the here if the here F stickia, F stickia, that's happiness in Greek. Kofku, 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 it's happiness in Japanese apparently. Kofku, Kofku, it's very, it's like singing. It's all about tone, isn't it? Try making some lists. You can make lists of all kinds of different things. You can make lists of countries you want to visit, lists of things you intend to do around the house, lists of different themes that have come up in dreams that you can remember, lists of different artists that you enjoy, you know, lists of different things you want to know about your best friend that you don't know yet. You can make lists about literally fucking anything and it's a very good exercise in getting to know yourself and it can be really fun it can be very exploratory i love making lists and actually you can get quite a lot of books now that are pre-made with different list suggestions for you quite a lot of stationers do this now so if you've got a bit of money to spend and you would like to actually get yourself a book with list suggestions like on every page so you can write a different list then you might find that really therapeutic loads of people love making lists try the cut-ups machine on languageisavirus.com to create sentences that are so appealing and sound so good but don't necessarily make any sense so what you do is you go to the cut-ups machine you get a piece of text just get a wall of text from the internet like a wikipedia article or something paste it into the cut-ups machine click the little button and it will rejiggle all of the words so that they're in a completely different order and then you'll be able to find just these incredible poetic segments that come through from the cut-ups machine and it really just it's it's gorgeous it's the icing on the cake of life let me try so i'm gonna go for the wikipedia entry on happiness because that's what it suggested to me because that's where i just was okay so i'm gonna copy the philosophy of happiness claim human's life excellent their sake the only to thus happy right it life accordingly translate Excellent and alone, Aristotle, ethics, not arguments. Note is life, second the thing arrives. <laughs> it's like really abstract, surrealist poetry. Desire life good, activity that fulfills and does, activity in function as happiness. For however that which is happy is also not excellent. What? <laughs> Self-pleasuring might be something that you want to consider. If that's something that you enjoy doing and you're comfortable with that, might want to make some time to get it done. Although I will state that it doesn't always need to have a sexual or sensual element to it necessarily. I definitely feel like there's other ways to give yourself sensations of pleasure, like for example, stroking your own skin, running your fingers through your own hair. And that can feel sensual, but it doesn't necessarily need to lead to the kind of self-pleasuring that comes to mind instantly. <laughs> if you need a lift in your mood, you might want to try it out. It definitely has been known to be helpful to a great many people. It's an international thing, darling. It's not regional. It's it's more, it's international. It's the world over. People do enjoy a little bit of strengthening one's relationship with oneself. 
Try going in search of organisations, charities, funds that you would like to donate to or do something to or raise awareness of. There's so many different amazing people out there doing amazing things for all kinds of different causes. And even if you don't have, you know, a cent to donate and you feel like at the present time you can't really be actively involved and do anything for an organisation, sometimes it can just uplift your mood to see that so many people are doing awesome things. And sometimes it can definitely be the switch that needs to be flipped to get you out there doing awesome things as well and doing your bit and making it making that count but sometimes it can just be about making a little list of the things that you do want to get actively involved in when you feel like you're more up to it and remember that retweeting something raising awareness of something amongst your friends on social media or the people you hang out with online that also is doing something that is awareness raising so don't uh, don't kind of demean that act really do go ahead with that if you find something that you want other people to know about people that are doing good work people that are doing awesome things don't be afraid to spread awareness and also to think more about what you might want to do for various different organizations either now or in the future choose a film that you really love that you've seen loads of times that is comforting to you that you actually quite like to watch when you're in a crappy mood and put that film on but have a note pad handy and a pen and then as you're watching the film actually write notes on your response to the film your thoughts on it why it affects you the way that it does really delve into your deeper feelings about the film's content and that's really a very different way of approaching um, one of your most beloved films and you might find that you get some really different insights from that plan a pilgrimage that you're going to go on and then try recording it either as you're going on it or afterwards you might want to just plan to walk down to somewhere in the town that you haven't visited before like a brand new shop that's in the area or a park that you've never really visited you might want to go to a grave site you might want to go cross country and do something you know it really depends what your budget is how you're feeling whether or not you want to plan a road trip or if you just want to plan something that you can do in a day or even half a day that's actually maybe even walking distance from you and then record it record it with journaling record it with recording it on camera record it in any way that you feel like you can record it at the time or you can sit down and write about it or scrapbook about it afterwards you could write a song about it do something to commemorate the pilgrimage. Try creating a timeline of your life with all of the good shit on it. So times that you met people that are important to you, times that you went to really great festivals, funny things that happened, lovely experiences of moving to a new place or discovering a new band. You don't have to put the exact dates on the timeline, just the rough times that you remember that good things occurred. Try learning about a period in history that you're absolutely clueless on. That You've just got no idea what this period in history is all about you are aware of it but you actually really are at the baseline level of knowledge on it research it look into it illuminate yourself try making a shrine or a tribute poem or some kind of tribute piece of art that actually represents how much you love and look up to one of your heroes doesn't necessarily need to be a celebrity doesn't matter whether they're dead or alive it could be an ancestor it could be your partner it could be your pet do something to commemorate how special that individual has been and and how much they've changed your life and how extraordinary they are. Write in your gratitude journal and if you don't have a gratitude journal you might like to start one. This is my gratitude journal and it definitely has worked wonders for me. I absolutely love writing in this thing. I'm going to read you a couple of things that are in my gratitude journal. First gym session of the year and it went really well. Booked my flight to Amsterdam today, very excited. The local independent bookshop reopened and it's fucking amazing. <laughs> I took the time to tidy my room and organise my altar space. I'm grateful for having a roof over my head in this shitty weather. I had my favourite Waitrose salad for lunch. <laughs> Find out where your local food bank is and take some food there. Um, even if it's just one item of food that you place onto your weekly shop to put in the food bank, it makes so much difference and it's going to go to people who genuinely need it and put some good energy into it as well. Put some good juju into it before you drop it into the food bank and send that good loving energy, that compassionate essence to somebody who also finds themselves in a bit of a shitty situation and really just make that energetic exchange. Write some encouraging, beautiful, supportive words on a piece of paper. Go into your local library and leave them between the pages of a book. 
I have done this many times and I really love doing it. It gives me such a good feeling. And very often I will go to like the self-help section or the, the section on spirituality and personal development and leave leave the note there but sometimes I'll leave it in just random places like a book on architecture or a poetry book it's just really cool to imagine somebody finding it and having that anonymous way of um, entering someone's life and contributing something that could only be positive choose a talisman that you are going to play with and interact with when you're feeling crappy when you're feeling low you might want to choose a crystal you might want to choose a piece of jewelry if you want to you can put a blessing onto the piece of jewellery onto the object whatever it is um, choose to have something that reminds you to come back to a place of centre and really just breathe in strength and exhale whatever's keeping you down talismans can be so powerful we can use them for all kinds of different things you might want to enchant a talisman of some kind to just remind you of what a badass tough cookie you actually are so when the chips are down and you feel like you can't face the world you've got that talisman to just look at and play with and kind of interact with and it reminds you of your intention to do the best for yourself that you can. Create an altar that exists somewhere in your imagination. Create an altar that doesn't have any tangible manifestation but actually exists in your mind's eye and decide what you want to put on that altar and what you're going to do at that altar and where that altar is. Really build it up in your mind and build it up and build it up so that it's actually in HD so that it's like a perfect representation of exactly what you want that altar to be. I've had an astral altar for a really long time now and I have to take a boat to get to it. It's like I have to take a little kind of red... The only way I can describe it is it looks like a sort of Japanese style canoe with some carving on the front of it and I have to go to the centre of a body of still water and there there is kind of... it almost looks a little bit like... it's kind of a little bit of a, a, a take on a Shinto temple um, it kind of looks that way, it's shaped that way and inside there is my altar and I feel like I can go there anytime I want, I don't actually need my physical altar and when I'm away I very often don't take physical items with me to create a temporary altar, I just go to my astral altar, everything's there, everything's where I left it and it feels like home. You don't necessarily have to build an astral altar if you're not of the witchy persuasion, if you're not spiritual like that, if you don't really have a reflection space, you can build an astral den if you want to, you can build an astral tree house, you can really imagine your way into somewhere which is warm, and comforting and just helps you to have a space where you can just really take a load off and come back to yourself and come back to what's important to you. Do a cleansing of your physical space. You might want to do a smoke cleansing, you might want to do a sound cleansing. I'm very fond of walking incense around the room and saying words of power and just words to clear the space and place my intention into the space. I also really like sound cleansings as well. I have a couple of bells that I really love to use. I love using my chimes. Some people like to walk a cat handle around but it's really just about getting into every little corner of the space and feeding your intention into every corner, sending out those good vibes, neutralizing the space and bringing your essence to the space. Try doing a body scan meditation. This is basically where you just start right at the very top of your head, you go all the way down to the tips of your toes, focusing on every individual part of the body, um, really consciously trying to relax every part of the body. This is really, really good for getting people to sleep, but it's also really good when you're carrying a lot of tension, when you're stressed, when you've got those cyclical unhelpful thoughts dancing around in your brain box, a body scan meditation can be super useful. You can actually find a lot of guided body scan meditations online. I tend to find that it's just really easy for me to focus on doing one when I'm, you know, quiet and I'm lying on the bed. You don't have to lie down, you can sit up equally. It's better to lie down if you're using it to fall asleep though, and it is really good to fall asleep too, a body scan meditation. I will very often fall asleep before I actually reach my toes, which is a really awesome thing. Dance dance, 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 put some music on and dance, doesn't necessarily have to be loud, can be on your headphones if you want to, but cut up the rug, throw some shapes baby, do what you've got to do to just get that energy going, um, and people dance in all kinds of different ways, people dance in accordance with their ability, doesn't matter, no one's going to see you, it's your personal sacred act. Make an arrangement with somebody that you're going to talk to them on Skype or FaceTime, maybe there's somebody that you haven't spoken to for a while and you would love to have a little get together with them, maybe there's a big distance between you and it would be a really good thing to schedule some time to just check in with them, see what they're doing and exchange news. Never forget the awesome power of people watching 
watching. You can do it out of the window, you don't have to leave your house if you don't want to. You can do it in a public place. Obviously don't stare and be really, really blatant, but it is really nice to just kind of look around and look at people, look at what they're wearing, look at their interactions, kind of make up stories about them and where they're going in your head. Let your curiosity be piqued by the different ways that people dress and interact with each other. It's really fascinating. People watching can also be very soothing. Do not be scared of resorting to cute animal videos online when you're feeling crappy. Sometimes it's just the fucking ticket, to be completely honest with you. I really like videos of dogs and cats that are friends. Really enjoy that. I also love any any videos that involve reptiles, particularly geckos or beardies. I really love reptiles, they just really entertain me. I've got a lot of respect and a lot of time for reptiles. All kinds of uh, animal videos are great. I love animal sanctuary videos. Any videos that are high vibe, that involve animals being rescued and going on to live healthy lives, happy lives, or animals that are friends that shouldn't be friends, like a chicken and a dog and a... <laughs> There's just so many awesome videos going viral of cute animals and sometimes it does just give you the boost that you need. Get a pack of post-its and write down motivational quotes, supportive words, words of power, all that kind of thing, song lyrics that really inspire you and put them up all around your room or your home, whatever your living situation is right now. Um, just put one up wherever you can find space to put one up and you know what? If nothing in the home belongs to you and you're very much just kind of staying there until you have a more permanent situation get a post-it note and put it inside your planner inside your diary something like that um, or write something down on your notes on your phone take a screenshot of it and have it as your actual screensaver so that every time you look at your phone you see those beautiful supportive words of power that you have given to yourself to keep you going when times are tough try having a day of resurrection so you can resurrect possessions for example maybe there's a jumper that you used to love that you've just left at the back of the wardrobe that you never wear anymore you might want to get it out and style it up and wear it again maybe there is an album that you haven't listened to for 10 years and you loved it and it was a really important part of your life and maybe it's now time to give that album a listen again and think about how it affects you now and how it affected you then and why it was so important there's so many possessions that we forget about that we can re-love and there's so many um, wonderful pieces of content we can explore and absorb like rereading a book, re-listening to an album and really it takes us back, yes, to where we were but it also enables us to make fresh memories with those things and just really experience the value of keeping things in our lives for a long time. Try testing your memory. I know that one particular favourite way for people to do this is to try to remember all the American states. They're there's probably loads of Americans watching this that are like, that's fucking easy. <laughs> um, but there are tons of people that have to sit there and learn that and actually commit it to memory. There's so many other things you could do as well, though. It's a really good way to remember words from different languages is to give yourself a memory test. Keep going on with that memory test. You could do it every day of the week and see at the end of the week how much you've remembered. You could be learning about something, researching something and testing your memory in that way. You could test your memory when you take a new route and look at how many different landmarks you can remember. How many wrong turns do you take? You can test your memory in so many different ways. It's just, uh, it's awesome how many different things you can do to test the level of, of kind of uh, memory recall that you have and get it stronger and also be intrigued by how good your memory can be sometimes. And if your memory is shitty, which I know a lot of people have a poor memory and it's kind of like a downer for them, sometimes it's just about flexing that muscle and working that muscle until it gets stronger. So think about some different ways that you might want to do that. Make a vision board, make a mood board of some kind. You can do it using printed images, you can do it using cutouts from magazines, you can do it on corkboard, you can do it on cardboard, you can do it on paper, you can put it in a planner or you can literally frame it and put it on the wall. But try doing a board that represents what your vision is for your future or what kind of mood you want to be able to put yourself in at a moment's notice. Make a board that represents your strongest beliefs, your strongest convictions, your deepest passions, whatever you think um, might be useful for you to focus on. Create that amazing visual image so that you can really use it as um, a touchstone when you need it. Write down some things on pieces of paper that you want to get rid of, that you want to release, things that are still bothering you, that you wish weren't bothering you anymore, things 
things you're angry about that you want to be able to let go of and burn those pieces of paper. Obviously do it safely, but I must say that I do quite a lot of cauldron work where I write things down and I burn them. And sometimes I burn them to manifest them, but sometimes I burn them to banish them, to say, I'm going through the work of getting rid of these things and the symbolism of burning something like that in the cauldron really helps me. It helps me to stay focused on the things that I do want to release from my life and you can do a similar kind of thing and it can be really rejuvenating and can feel really good to do that you know sometimes if you've got a big fire if you've got a fire in your home or there's a fire outside you might want to think about actually having some kind of a, a ceremony of sorts where you cast things into the fire um, you know but if you've got a little cauldron on your altar equally you can have some note paper I have some note paper in my altar drawer and it really helps me sometimes to just write down the things that I'm angry about the things that I'm stressed about and then just burn them and watch them go up in motherfucking flames darling challenge yourself to discover 10 new things whether it's 10 new bands 10 new songs 10 new genres um, 10 new local places that you've never been before you could discover new poets new artists challenge yourself to go outside of the things that you currently know and actually interact with a fresh bunch of stuff that you actually have never come across before choose a country that you have no interaction with you don't know much about what's going on there in terms of current events you don't know any one from there and if, if somebody were to come up to you and say I'll give you a hundred dollars if you can tell me what's going on in that country right now you actually literally wouldn't be able to do it <laughs> get that country in mind and read some news stories about it really just find out what is going on there what's the political situation there what's the climate like um, what are people doing for work what are the three biggest problems in the country um, have a look at some polls have a look at what people think statistically about living in that country and just kind of uh, learn a little bit more about this place that you literally just know nothing about. Try leaving some thoughtful, supportive comments underneath videos or blog posts online. Be a little bit of a positivity fairy on the internet and just leave some positive comments that can leave people feeling like their content has been worthwhile to watch. Let people know what you really enjoyed about the content and really just bring a smile to somebody's face and let them know that what they're doing matters and that you really enjoyed what they had to say um, or what they were bringing to the table. It feels very good sometimes to just lavish praise and affirmation onto somebody who's done something that you've enjoyed consuming. Curate your social media lists and by that I mean go through all of your social media platforms and just get rid of anything that is low vibe, that is really testing your patience, um, anybody that you kind of like to hate watch just unfollow, you know, don't have to make a big song and dance out of it but just do it for your own sense of sanity and your own well-being. If you know that there are certain communities that you're into that actually leave you feeling Feeling very low vibe, very yucky. Now's the time maybe to have a clear out of those things. If there are people on Facebook from years and years and years ago and you feel like it's kind of disingenuous to keep them linked on your account because you don't really know them anymore um, and maybe you didn't even have a good relationship with them then but you just added them because you went to the same school or whatever perfect time to just have a clear out and make your social media experiences into um, positive ones and by the same token you might want to decide that you're going to have a social media break which is just as valid of a thing to do but definitely don't tell yourself that it's either having a complete social media break or having a crappy experience on social media because you're surrounded by shit that you don't really want to be involved with and you don't want to think about. There is another way. <laughs> there's definitely a way to end up enjoying your social media experience and it's really curating it you know it's making sure that you let go of the things that are not high vibe for you that are not really working for you and fill your feed up with the stuff that you do want to see and even if you only want to see things on Facebook from your three closest friends unfollow everybody else you don't have to unfriend them but on Facebook on your personal profile you can unfollow people so that you never get updates from them you never get their statuses or anything like that in your feed maybe you might want to try doing that and then you will really be curating your Facebook feed and I know for the Facebook feed for a lot of people it's time suckage it can be stressful 
So maybe you want to start by curating that. But whatever the case may be, get rid of things that are not shiny and fizzy and high vibe for you. Let your social media be a place you come to for inspiration rather than finding it's a place that you have to leave due to perspiration and frustration. Do a digital declutter. So have a look on your laptop or your PC. Get rid of all of the Word files and just the old downloads and the shit that you don't need anymore. Completely clear out the machine and do what you've got to do to make sure that the virus protection is there basically clean out your computer clean out your beautiful electronic thing that keeps you connected to the world that you may or may not use for your personal projects and things like that make sure that it's running to full capacity that it's not being bogged down by loads and loads of shit that is not necessary anymore if you've got a hard drive fill it up with the stuff that you do want to save so that it's actually off of your machine hold a funeral for something or someone that you need to release make it into a ritual holding funerals can be such an incredibly alchemical act it really can promote a huge inner transformation you can say some words to commemorate what was you can do something you know witchy something ritualistic to confirm that yes you're now committing this thing to the ground you're saying goodbye to it you acknowledge that it's gone and when we do something like this when we do a shamanic funeral if you like or for want of a better word um, a ritualistic funeral or a spiritual funeral it's not we're not saying that afterwards we're never going to suffer with any feelings of loss or regret ever again i don't think it's like that i don't think it's as like instantaneous as that but i do think it can be very helpful i do think it can be very symbolic when we have a funeral for something or someone a relationship a dream um you know that we're trying to say goodbye to and commit to the ground in psycho spiritual terms i think a funeral can be a very useful thing to do it can be a useful thing to organize and actually carry out last but not least you might want to try screaming into to a pillow this is something that I have done for absolutely fucking years when I'm just feeling really stressed and I'm at the end of my tether I need to have a good scream but I don't necessarily want to go outside and scream in the street and freak people out and potentially risk the police being called so I like to have a good old scream into a pillow and I used to do this when I was growing up <laughs> when I was a teenager sometimes and my mum would absolutely just find it hilarious so here we go just before I sign off have one of my ridiculous horror movie screams to go out with <coughs> oh that felt so fucking good <laughs> i hope that these 50 ideas have been helpful and hopefully this is a resource you'll be able to return to as and when you need it i'm going to leave the complete list of all 50 of the tips that i gave down below thank you so much for going on this journey with me i very much enjoyed sharing these things with you if you have anything that you like to do to get you out of a slump to get you out of a bad mood to help you with bouts of depression or anything like that please leave your tips and suggestions down below and if there is anything in this list that you never tried before and you actually gave it a go or you're planning to give it a go please let me know i would love to know um, what kinds of things really kind of struck your interest and made you think that you would like to try them okay much love pop tarts as always blessed be Mwah.